Good day chaps. So today's video is to celebrate hitting 2,000 subs, which we couldn't have done without you and your amazing support and help. So we figured for each target achieved in YouTube, we would make something a bit different or quirky, but based on something tangible and real. So today's video is going to be on my favorite quirky vehicles. It's the M577 Armored Personnel Carrier from the classic film, Aliens. Stand by to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Two. One. Mark. So I don't think the film needs much introduction. It's a classic in and of itself. A sequel to the award-winning Alien by Ridley Scott, the second film took the suspense from the first film and turned it into an action masterpiece, focusing more on terror, less on horror, with the undertones of the Vietnam War thrown in. While the whole film is a masterpiece, to me my favourite part was always Ripley's Rescue in the APC, scored by James Horner. It's brilliant. But let's take a look at the vehicle itself. Who made it, and how, and what happened to it after the filming? The story goes back to 1985, and took part at two major filming locations. The famous Pinewood Studios in London, and the Acton Lane Power Station in Ealing, North London. The power station itself was decommissioned in 1983 and scouted for the movie in 1985. The interior of the building was photographed and discovered to be large enough to film inside without resulting in extra expensive stages to be created. And so with just the application of some resin here and there and a few Wayland yutani stickers and some creative atmospheric lighting, fully a third of the film set was already in place. The second part of the film set was done in Pinewood Studios where a model of the colony was built, as well as the famous towers of the cooling plant. In fact, as a small easter egg, those water towers of Pinewood Studios were added into the colony model as the dropship flies over and around the buildings in a sort of hit and miss and it's gone moment. The same towers appear in Alien 3 and Prometheus also as a hidden cameo. As for the train and scenery, a lot of the support vehicles in the film were a combination of models from the Sulaco and the dropships while the APC was a combination of several models, including a small remote vehicle, a large one-fifth scale remote control vehicle, and a full-size working vehicle. The remote control models were used for most of the exterior shots, driving from the dropship to the plant, and of course some of the action scenes where it's barreling to the rescue, which cut smoothly between the model and the stage setup. Much of the scenery from the Acton power station was miniaturized down into a long tunnel setup, tilted at an angle to allow the vehicle to roll out if it stopped working, and then carefully lighted to look the same as the full-size set. But to get the shots he wanted, the film director also realised he needed a full-size vehicle as well. Several plans and layouts had been drawn up, and the early artwork showed the vehicle to be quite different, with a tapered bow and a large rear section, which looked quite different from the finished version, which it was planned would have been built from scratch probably using mining trucks for chassis due to their large 10-foot wheels. This would have been prohibitively expensive, while at the same time it didn't fit the more sensible and practical view that Cameron wanted. However, British Airways were going through a revamp at the time, including the upgrading of its older airport tugs, and so the film crew were able to acquire an older model which was large, had oversized wheels, and could be readily converted. The vehicle itself was the ATT-77, made by the Hunsler Engine Company of Leeds in Yorkshire, which had been around since the pre-war and were famous for making diesel shunting locomotives and working trains. The ATT stood for Aircraft Towing Tractor and the 77 for the total tractive effort of £77,000, which is double that of some locomotives. This tractive effort was required to pull the 437 tonnes of a fully laden Boeing 747, helped by its 635 horsepower diesel engine. To help with this and gain traction, the base vehicle was also very heavy, weighed down with lead ballast and came in at an impressive 72 tonnes. She was some 9 metres long, 3 metres wide and 2 metres tall. While this vehicle was quite suitable aesthetically and sported the large wheels required, it was also far too heavy for the role required, notably driving inside the power station where it would have just have formed through the multiple floors and levels that made up the main building. Incidentally, the same area was also used in the original Batman film, and can be clearly seen as he enters the power station. The vehicle was passed to a metal workshop in the Slough Trading Estate, who converted the vehicle into the APC role. 
They started by removing some 35 tons of lead from the hull and wheels to get the vehicle to a level it would operate inside the main building. And even then, it required them to reinforce the road sections, although she did have some problems in braking, resulting in some very near accidents. The vehicle itself was then made up of plywood and boilerplate to give its distinctive looks and feels. This included the steel wheel covers. The original driver for the aircraft tug was seconded to the film to operate the vehicle. The rear cab was covered over and the front cab split in half, with the driver remaining on the left hand side who now had an armoured door added. For a few scenes where they wanted to have the Marines exit the vehicle, they removed the content from the ground power unit and had a hollow area which could hold three people and by careful angling and lighting looked like they were disembarking from the vehicle with all other interior shots being filmed from inside a studio set. Despite the time and effort, the vehicle is actually used rather sparingly in the film. Approaching the colony had blocks in the rain, which was also added as the studio set had flooded. The scenes are entering the building are models. However, when you next see it in the corridor with the Marines exiting, that is the full-size vehicle resting on reinforced plating. The action scenes are a mix of all three, with the corridor chase being a model with pyrotechnics fitted to it, the crash being the real vehicle in places, and while the interior is all filmed in a separate set as there was nowhere near enough space. The internal parts of the driving scenes are also made out of a Vulcan bomber cockpit. Notably, the driver's tillers used by Ripley are the foot pedals from a Vulcan flipped upside down. The film went on to become a huge commercial success in its own right, and arguably the last good movie of the franchise. The vehicle itself was parked outside Leicester Square for the opening as a film prop. Afterwards, it was taken back to Pinewood Studios and sat outside at the rear parking lot for about a decade. Various attempts were made to purchase the machine, but to no avail. Eventually, it was taken outside for a photo shoot and then sadly sent to a scrapyard. Well guys, we hope you like this 2000 subspecial. We'll get back to the business of proper tank videos until we hopefully hit another milestone. But if you did like this, give it a share or a like or a sub if you haven't. And let us know your favourite sci-fi fantasy vehicle. It all helps. And until next time, 